It's an honor and a privilege to have with us, of course, the Hall of Famer Hank Aaron. Now, before before we get before we get to the agenda, I would pers I would personally like to invite the mayor forward, Mr. Ed Lambert, to welcome Hank Aaron, Mayor Lambert, please. Thank you, everybody. It's just an opportunity for me, on behalf of the city of Fall River, members of the school committee, and we're represented here today by Julie Repose and Wayne Rigo, uh, to welcome our guests to the city of Fall River, but also to welcome the message that I think our guests bring, and that's something that we are very, very grateful for. I know that there are many of us in our community who watched Hank Aaron throughout his career, who watched an individual who personified what it's like uh, to struggle against the odds, to deal with the kind of pressure that he had to deal with, and to make the right choices. And what we're about hearing this afternoon is about making choices. And so I think that that message is something that we embrace as well as we embrace the celebrity of Mr. Hank Aaron, but I can tell you that this community is very proud to have him in our midst here today. And so, Mr. Aaron, welcome. We're glad that you're joined by your friend Joe Andrews. Joe Andrews, a Durfee graduate, who himself is also going to not only speak about choices, but show what success can mean in terms of how that can be played out in many different ways. And so we thank both of them for being here. And now it's my uh, privilege uh, to introduce a gentleman who will move the program forward. We thank him for his help in arranging this here this afternoon, the Sheriff of Bristol County, Sheriff Tom Hodgson. People, people, I, I'm surprised, and I think people on the stage are surprised, because usually when we have guests here at Durfee High School, you're usually very well behaved as you are right now, and it will be an excellent program, and you would spoil it for everyone else if you don't listen. So Sheriff Hodgson will now introduce the speakers this afternoon, and we hope you all pay attention because you'll get more of the program. Thank you, Sheriff Hodgson. Uh, Mayor, the Superintendent, Mr. Aaron, Mr. Attar. Kids, uh, as you know, I was here some time ago, and when I, shortly after taking over as sheriff, one of the first things that we began to do was to go around the schools and talk about something that's very, very important. And that was the message about where you are right now as kids, having choices and opportunities, and being in the most powerful place that you could ever be in which is right here, being able to exercise the freedoms of choice. And when I came before, I talked about the importance of focusing on choice and helping your fellow classmates at times where they may be about to make bad choices and being the role model for them and helping them to make the right choices and discouraging them from going about making the wrong choices. And you know, the the fact that Henry Aaron was willing to come here today means a great deal not only to me, but I think to all students throughout Bristol County because Henry Aaron's been involved with education, concerned about youth, concerned about our future. And he has taken time out of his busy schedule to come here today to reinforce the message about choices. And the story you're going to hear today is really a story about two guys who started out like all of you with all kinds of opportunities to make choices. And along the way, developed a friendship. And they developed the friendship when they met about 45 years ago this summer in the Atlanta Braves Farm Club and they both started out. And many of you know, Mr. Andrews was a tremendous athlete, one of the greatest athletes ever to come out of this state. And Henry Aaron and Joe Andrews met in that farm club, and all of a sudden they became to be, and excuse the pun, a real hit with everybody there. Hank Aaron, 
started hitting home runs and he didn't stop, as you know. And so did Joe Andrews. Henry Aaron was telling us on the way over here how great a ball player Joe was. And where the choices come in are along the way as their friendship developed and they continue to be successful in the game of baseball. Henry Aaron kept hitting home runs, home run after home run, eventually becoming a national hero and a role model for kids and adults all over this country. Joe Andrews started striking out every so often because he started to make some bad choices. And he's going to tell you about them. And the choices were he decided, unfortunately, to get caught up with alcohol and eventually drugs, where substance abuse began to impact his ability to play. And there was a price for him to pay for that. But there's an even greater story here about both of these gentlemen. And that is they were faced with tremendous adversity. Joe Andrews facing a substance abuse problem, trying to overcome that and did. And in the end, you'll see how he continues to hit home runs in a very different way. But the great life lesson here is that, and one of the great tributes I think about Henry Aaron, while all of us are very, very ecstatic about the fact that he broke the record of Babe Ruth, I think his greatest accomplishment and his greatest story is he's a man that not only had to take on the physical challenges, but on top of that, to make those achievements that he did, he had to fight an emotional burden that was given to him almost every day along the way. See, he didn't have it the same way the players who were not of color had it. Because he wasn't allowed to get off the bus and go in and eat, if you can believe this, in the same restaurants with his own teammates. Because his skin was a different color. And if you think about that for a minute, every one of you, what it must be like to some, have somebody single you out and say, I'm sorry, you can't enjoy the friendship, partake in the meals with your teammates because you're black, you're Chinese, you're Catholic or you're Protestant. But in spite of all that, and there are times that Henry Aaron, I think, talked at one time about saying, forget it, I'm going give to give up. But he never did. And that, I think, is the greatest thing about Henry Aaron, that he faced that adversity. He faced those challenges that came along the way in life, and he became, all the way through his life, a great champion. And the message is, kids, again, it's about choices. Make sure as you sit here today, that you listen carefully to this story because it's all about life's lessons. It's about two great guys who became friends along the way, were, were separated by choices they made, but always remained friends. And you know, the one last thing before I introduce Joe Andrews that I want to say about Joe Andrews is that when Henry Aaron sat on that bus, Joe Andrews sat right beside him. And all of us should be proud of that because Joe Andrews wasn't going to let anybody tell him that because of somebody's race or creed that that was going to have anything to do with his friendship and what he believed life was really all about. And they've stood together along the way, remained great friends, and I think in large part because of the choice that Joe Andrews made. And he used to stand by, and I heard a story, he used to stand by Hank Aaron, and people would yell racial slurs and be rude to Hank Aaron. And Joe Andrews stood by his side, I think with a bat in his hand on some occasions, and said, if you're coming after him, you're coming after me. And that's at a time in our country, sadly, that people were discriminating against people because they were black. 
I'm not going to go on any longer now because the real story lies with these two gentlemen who I think, and I, again, I want to say, I can't think of a greater life story than Henry Aaron and Joe Andrews for all they overcame to become the champions that they are today. I hope you'll listen carefully to their message because it's a message about where all of you will be going in life and the kinds of challenges you may face and how you can overcome them and be successful and be champions yourself. I'm going to take now the opportunity to introduce Joe Andrews. All of you, or many of you know, great athlete here from Fall River, who we're so proud of, our native son, if you will. And uh, let him begin the story uh, with his involvement with Hank Aaron and his life struggles. And then we'll introduce uh, Henry Aaron for his comments. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Cheryl, very much for those kind words. Uh, there aren't words that I can I can say. I don't think properly. I uh, I probably know a number of you of the students. I know I know quite a few of the teachers uh, out there. I see my pal Ray Maduras here. Uh, however, I, I admit there's times. Uh, when I, I wish I was stuck in a time capsule. It was, Charles right, it was 45 years ago, this summer, this past summer that I first met uh, Henry Arnn. Uh, most people call him Hank. Uh, I've always called him Henry. I called him Henry in 1953. Uh, and I call him Henry to this day. But something happened to me back in 1953. Uh, I played a couple of years, I'm a couple of years older than Henry, and I played a couple of years before he signed with the Braves. And when we finally got together in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, I really didn't know who he was, and hap chance, I, I got a locker right next to him. And got to know a little bit about him just by saying hello, greeting each other, and watching the way he performed and took care of himself. Uh, if I was up here on this stage today and I said they were all pleasant memories of the year of 1953, I would be amiss. Uh, 1953 had to be a, well, you don't even understand. I can't even make a point. I'm trying to be formal. But I doubt very much, I doubt very much if there is, I know, including me, including me, if there is anyone here with the courage and the strength I'm not talking about the hang in the street gang. I'm not talking about Knuckle City. I'm not talking about the shenanigans, and you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking the inner toughness that it takes. I know what it had to, what I went through after I got out of baseball. I've been into this school. I did a little work in the school. Now I'm with the sheriff's department running programs in the prison. Oh, and by the way, sheriff, I didn't tell you I have a note from an inmate. I constantly get notes. They hand me notes. They think I have an in with the sheriff. They don't know me and they don't know the sheriff. I just put the, happen to have this one in my back pocket. But I constantly get bombarded with, can you say something to someone? I, I, I made a mistake, and we talk about mistakes. We talk about a lot of mistakes because, you know, I didn't write the book on mistakes, but I helped fill a few paragraphs in. 
And I also know what it takes to get yourself straightened back out and on the right path. And this man sitting here, when I was 33, 33, 34 years old, when I had to pick up all the pieces, when my life was in complete shambles, and I don't know, and I know you're too young, you don't know what it is because you haven't been out there, and I'm speaking to the students mostly. When you become unemployable, Unemployable does not mean that you don't have a job. That doesn't mean that. My son right now is unemployable. I mean, he, he, he's unemployed, I'm sorry. My son is unemployed. But he's not unemployable. I was unemployable. I was not wanted. I had developed an alcohol problem that started back in high school. And it escalated. So that by the time I reached 33, I, I was a basket case. But I thought I could control it. And I reached out for help, and I made a tape one time with Gil Santos. And you know, way back in the back of my mind, there was one person that was always standing out. Henry Aaron. I knew what he was accomplishing I was back in 1965. I knew what he was accomplishing. He was starting to make a mark in baseball. I also knew what he went through. I heard all of the racial slurs. I played first base. Henry played second base. I heard everything. A lot of them were directed at me. And I said to myself, if this little black kid from Mobile, Alabama, if he's, if he's got enough guts to go ahead and pursue and push ahead and forge ahead and not lose focus, what's wrong with me? I can put a cork on that bottle. I can get back up on my feet and try to make something out of my life. And I did that. And I've been fairly successful at times. But I never forgot. Just like Henry has never forgotten. I never forgot where I came from. I always remember what it was like. And I remember how hard it was to come back. And once I made it back, I've stayed not in touch constantly. But here is a prime example of Two people born miles and miles apart, two years difference in age, and yet a bond being formed back in 19... I saw the love. I saw the determination on this guy's young face. And I had a young face, believe it or not, then. But I saw what he... the inner toughness that he went through. And he was certainly successful, and he went on to be a success. You know, and Henry doesn't forget, Henry has never said no to me. Henry's a people person. We said a lot of things on the, on the way over. We had a chat, and I've been a little uptight for the last few days or so, knowing he was coming up, wanting everything to go smoothly and the whole thing, and yet I've been with him for 10 or 20 minutes or so, and I'm relaxed. I believe Ed Talbot said the same. He's relaxed with him. I mean, is this really Hank Aaron? Is this, I mean, is he really the guy that you see on TV hitting that home run out of the park and the scoreboard is booming 715 and Hank Aaron rounds the bases and he comes here. Oh, he's a little older now. <laughs> he's a little heavier now like I am. Me, I don't know if it's good living on his part. I don't know what it is on mine. However, you know, the man... The man hasn't changed. I'm going to turn it to Henry, but let me tell you something. To know the guy, really, to really know him, forget what he's done. Forget the homer. You can't, I guess. He's set records, so many records that it's... But to know the guy is to love him. I can stand here and say I love a human being, a male, because I do. I liked him when he was a kid. 
When he was 19, I was 21. I liked him. I thought the world of him. I guess somebody had to reach out a hand. And I reached mine out because I didn't much care. I know what injustice is. I don't like injustice today. Right now, today. I don't like it when I see it in the prison. When I'm doing a class in the prison, and one of the inmates are in there just to get out of their cell. You know what I tell them? Get out of here. You're not going to interrupt. I don't want anybody else interrupted. I don't like injustice. That's why, I guess way back then, I, something came out of me. But there's a guy who I met 45 years ago, who I know one thing, he's my friend. And at that, I'm, I'm going to turn this microphone over to the Hammer Hank Aaron. Henry. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Thank you very much, Joe. And for those kind words, and uh, let, me, uh, let me start out by saying that uh, I'm extremely proud, extremely proud to be here this evening, to talk with you, and to see so many bright and energetic and so many good-looking kids. I know all of you make A's, I know all of you are looking forward to going to college. I know all of these good things are going to happen to you. First, let me say that Joe, when you and I played in Jacksonville some 45 years ago, when I first met you, I knew right away that you was going to be my friend for a long time. And I'm extremely proud to say that that has always stood by me and you are 100%. Joe. <clears throat> You know, we talked about a moment ago, and I think all of us, we talked about choices that we make. Some of us make good choices, and some of us make bad choices. Uh, I happen to make a good choice as far as playing baseball. But I'm here today, this afternoon, to talk to you about the choices that you will have to make. Not about what I did, not about the 755 home runs that I hit of all of the other records. But I'm here, I'm here, to, I'm here this afternoon to talk about choices that you, young people, are going to have to make in your life in order to be successful. You may not never hit on a home run in your life. You may not never be able to play in a big league, or put a big league uniform on. But the most important thing in life is to try to do things that everybody on this stage, even your teachers around, and your community that all of us is going to be, we're going to be very, very proud of. Joe mentioned a moment ago about some of the things that happened in Jacksonville, Florida, when for the first time, Joe, that they had ever had black and white players playing together. And at that time, little did I know about what my choices was. I knew that I wanted to play baseball. And I knew that the only way that I was going to prove to people across this country that if given the opportunity to play baseball, that I had to make the right choice. I had to do something that nobody else would think about doing. I couldn't go to the ballpark and play a game and then go out casually and have a beer, do anything, but I wasn't drinking at that time. But I, could, I wasn't allowed to do that. I wasn't allowed to stay out to 12 o'clock at night because all eyes were on me. 
all eyes was on the three on the three black players that happened to be playing in Jacksonville at that time, and that was Felix Mantia, myself, and Horace Garner. We all knew that we had to set an example. Yes, why would the pressure be on us? Why would we, of all people, simply because of the color of our skin, was denied all of the rights that everybody else had? But if you look back and you study your history, that was the trend in America at that time, not only in baseball, but it also was a trend in even going to the department store, going to the grocery store, going any place that you wanted to go. If you cared, if you were a black player, a black person, you were always treated as a second class citizen. The most important thing that I wanted to to leave at that time was to do the very best. If given the opportunity, and I was given that opportunity to play baseball, that I knew that if I was given the opportunity that I was going to let people know that I could do anything and everything that anybody else could do, if given that opportunity. As Joe mentioned a moment ago, it was extremely hard. We went to places like Savannah, Georgia, and playing second base, for some reason they had a direct bead on me and they would throw rocks for nine innings and hit me in the top of my head. And I knew that there was nothing I could do about it. I said, well, the only thing I could do is just wait until I get to home plate, hit a home run, and do something that would get the crowd aroused. But all of these things, all of these things, I had to make the right choice. I could have very easily decided to go back home, decided to say, hey, the system is against me. I can't do anything. Mama, I'm finished. Daddy, I'm finished. The system is against me. We can't accomplish anything. They won't let us. But I decided in my mind that I was going to do everything that I could to pave the way for other black players who was coming behind me to have it a little bit easier than I was having it. That was my goal, and that was our goal, was to do those things. Well, you know, I was extremely lucky. I went on and I had a great career, as Joe mentioned, home runs, but that is aside the point. I'm here to tell you that you, I keep mentioning, you have choices that you've got to make. And let me tell you a story about a, uh, this is not a friend of mine, but I happen to know this young man. I mentioned this story a moment ago, and I know all of you looking at me up here and say, how? that this man managed to hit 755 home runs. How did he manage to be so successful? Well, you know, when I played baseball, I only weighed 175, 80 pounds. And I didn't hit him quite as far as McGuire, but we, got, we touched the same bases, four bases. He hit him 500 feet, I hit him 250, but I got around the bases just like he did. But I'm saying that to say that when I started playing baseball and started doing the things that I wanted to do, I knew that I had to accomplish a record that nobody else would ever accomplish. Not so much as a home run, but had to do some things that nobody else would think about doing. This story I'm about to tell you happened to me after I had started playing baseball. It wasn't to me, but it happened to a, a young man similar to yourself. And all of you can put yourself in this same young man's shoe. I don't know, I'm sure none of you remember Walt Garrison, but a lot of people on stage remember Walt Garrison. He was a football player that used to play with the Dallas Cowboys. And I was working with Magnavox at the time, and I remember in Indianapolis, I went to one high school similar to this, and I was talking to all of the students, and I looked on this kid was about six foot four and he weighed about 230 Joe at the time. And he was recruited by several colleges across the country. And I, the doc, in fact, one of the teachers that told me, he said, hey, this kid can go anywhere he wanted and play football. Well, he did. He was recruited to go to a lot of schools and he finally ended up going to one of the Big Ten schools. When he got there, he'd taken a physical. Well, Walt Garrison was his hero. He loved Walt Garrison. He loved him. Now, I'm sure most of you out there don't know 
never seen Walt Garrison, but Walt Garrison made a commercial many years ago. And in his back pocket, he had a little can of snuff about this big. He used to put it in his mouth, and he used to ride little horses. And this guy loved Walt Garrison. He did everything that Walt Garrison did. And when he was recruited, the doctors, he went to take his physical at the college. And he opened his mouth up and saw these little bubbles in his mouth. And the doctor said, son, you got to stop doing what you're doing. He said, Walt Garrison is my hero. i got to keep doing what he's doing. So lo and behold, his kid continued to, to, dip, to dip the school. I guess that's what they call it. So anyhow, his first year in college, his first year, I think he got right through the middle of college, and they found out these little bubbles had turned into cancer. And in less than a year, they had cut off half of this young man's face. This 6'5", 280-foot-pound young man, they cut off half his face, and in one year, this kid had died. And I tell you this sad story because when you look at me and you say, oh, I want to be like Hank Aaron, I want to be like Michael Jordan, I want to be like, please, do your own thing. I've always said that heroes, people that you admire are right here on stage. You see them every day, the school teachers every day. Those are your heroes. Don't look at me and say, I want to hit 755 home runs because you got everything, the choice is yours. You can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be a school teacher, you can do anything that you want to do. But for God's sake, do something that we all going to be proud of, what you going to do. I, my choice. Thank you. My choice, my choice was baseball. But look at the paper every day. I was reading the paper coming here this morning. We are about, I know we are ways from it, but it's even encouraging when you talk about licking cancer. I mean, these are doctors who's talking about just a few years from now, you know, I may not be here, George, somebody, but we are going to lick cancer. They are, in a, they, they are doing it. I have, I couldn't do that. I'm a baseball player. But you have to admire, these are heroes. These people sit back and they research and they do all of these wonderful things that's going to help you and going to help your children to maintain a life for the next 40 or 50 years. Those are heroes. Those are the people that you ought to admire. So you have choices. Just because you're not able to hit home runs, you're able to do a lot of other things in life. Just because you're not able to play like Michael Jordan, you are able to do a lot of things in life. So keep on pitching, keep on doing it. These instructors, Joe and everyone on stage here, loves you. They love you not only because you have the potential to do a lot of great things, but they love you because you are our future. You are the future of America. You are the future. If you fail, this country is going to fail. I'm telling you, if you fail, this country is going to fail. Out there in this audience, you may have the next president of the United States. You may have the next governor of this state. You may have the next school teacher. You may have anyone out there. But the choice is yours. Now, there's one thing that you can do to, 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 do, to do away with those choices. You can run with gangs. You can do some of the other things, you know, that is going to put, it's going to divide you. Joe talked about it a moment ago. Joe got off on the wrong track, but God helped him. He's back on the right track, and he know what he have to do, and he's been doing it for the last few years. I've been keeping up with Joe. This is a great, this is a good man. I mean, really, he's a good person. Yes, he got off on the wrong track, but fortunately for him, he got back on the right track. God sees him as one that's going to help, not only help you choose the right, make the right choice, but to help you get your life straightened out also. So I'm here to tell you, I'm not going to keep you very long, but I'm here to tell you that I'm encouraged by what I see in our generation of young people. I know a lot of people say, we got a lot of bad kids. We don't have any bad kids. All you kids are very good, every one of you. Every one of you have a brain, every one of you have something in mind, and every one of you have a future. But the choice is yours. 
and for God's sake, make the right choice. Make the right choice. Thank you very much. about to conclude the program, but before we do, I just want to say a couple of words in closing uh, before I turn the mic over to Mr. Attar. You know, I started out in the beginning by talking about what I felt was the greatest accomplishment of Hank Aaron. And Henry Aaron, I think, just reinforced what I said in the very beginning. The essence of his human spirit, the essence of Henry Aaron as a man, was all rooted in the message he just gave you. Because you know, we talked about what it was like having people throw rocks at him while he was out there playing. And you know, he could have made a very different choice. He had a choice. He could have gotten very angry, and I'm sure he did inside, and retaliated and allowed that to take him away from his goals and his mission. But he didn't. He endured. And Joey Andrews talked about courage. Yeah, this man has a lot of courage. And you know, something Henry didn't mention that he talked to me about on the way over, that I think speaks to what he's all about and how compassionate he is in spite of all the adversity he had to overcome to accomplish his goals that most of us never would have had to overcome. Henry told me that I asked him about his memorabilia, and he said, you know, I got five golden gloves, two silver bats, all the baseballs along the way that he was knocking out of the park every time he continued to build on his record after he passed Babe Ruth. And you know what he did? With the exception of his last ball, he gave it to the Baseball Hall of Fame Museum so that people all over this country who visited there could look at, them, look at the accomplishments, feel some incentive. The other thing he was talking to me about over breakfast this morning was about giving back. You know, it's one thing to go out there and be a great athlete, to accomplish a lot of things and be rewarded for it financially. One of the things that struck me about Henry Aaron when he was talking to me about this was, he said, you know something? In today's world, with today's athletes, we need more of them to give back. To look at what community is all about, recognize the talent that God had given them that they developed, and use it in a way to give back to all of you. The message about community, making good choices to help one another, and build the quality of life in your neighborhoods, in the towns and cities where you live. I talked about them both being heroes, Joe Andrews and Henry Aaron, and I talked about striking out, as Joe did when he made a couple of bad choices. But what's great about it all is that Hank Aaron continues to hit home runs by doing the kinds of things he's doing, using his experience as a humble man to come and talk to all of you to give you a leg up to help prevent you from making bad choices and ending up in jail or in some other place in life where you don't want to be. Joe Andrews, yeah, he's still hitting home runs every day. He works with inmates in our facility. He does AA programs in the communities. And he's taking his experience and he's doing all he can to help those who have made mistakes to see 
that you can continue to hit home runs and you can be somebody who can give back to your community. Both men have done this, and as far as I'm concerned, I agree with everything Hank said about heroes, but in my mind, these men certainly represent heroes in my heart and in my mind. They're what community is all about. They're what giving back is all about. I want to thank them both for coming here today, what wonderful individuals they are. Thank you, Sheriff. And again, I just want, I just want, on behalf of Deerfield High School, I don't think you realize what a privilege it is to have Hank Aaron and Joe Andrews here this afternoon. And I hope the message that Mr. Aaron gave you sends a message about making the right choices. You know, I know Mr. Andrews quite well, although he's a little older than I am. Joe is and was the best athlete ever to come out of Deerfield High School. In fact, in fact, he, he is the only Deerfield graduate whose number has been retired, and that was number 44. Again, as Mr. Aaron said, through determination, through hard work, and the bottom line is he believed in himself. If you believe in yourself, you could do anything you want, you could be anything you want, but it's up to you but the bottom line is, make the right choice. And I want to, at this time, also thank School Committee Riley, Raposa, and Regal for attending this assembly this morning, this afternoon. And again, once again, Ms. Aaron, on behalf of Deerfield High School, thank you for coming. As all good things have to come to an end, it is not, the assembly is now over, and please report back to Block D schedule. Thank you very much.